the general manager of KRON-TV San Francisco, Mr. Harold P.C. The film which you are about to witness is one of the many non-entertainment public service programs produced in color by KRON-TV, Channel 4, San Francisco. The rights to this film specifically prohibit its use for broadcast without the express permission of KRON-TV. The management of KRON-TV hopes you will derive some benefit from this presentation, and we solicit your comments. <laughs> Do you know why I'm laughing? No. <laughs> That's why I'm laughing. <laughs> what is the difference between reality and illusion, between sanity and madness? If the world were to melt before your eyes, dissolving into fragments of color and shadow, it would be a frightening place. Yet, what if within those shattered fragments you sense new truths about the world and about yourself? What would you say of such an experience? Assignment 4, produced in the community interest by the News and Documentary Programs Department of KRON-TV. Tonight, LSD, The Other Side of Reality, a special report in color on the most powerful of a new group of synthetic drugs which alter the consciousness of man. This tiny ampule of LSD-25 has a power to put before your mind's eye images so strange as to make your wildest dream seem prosaic, dull, uninspired. Doctors call it psychotomimetic, for it produces temporary changes in personality that seem somewhat like the insanity known as schizophrenia. Science finds the drug is not physically harmful, not habit-forming, not even painful. But it is said of LSD that whoever submits to its potent spell will be changed by the experience, perhaps subtly, perhaps profoundly changed. And this awesome magic of 20th century chemistry seeming to fashion new personalities in the test tube both entices and alarms us. So on many fronts, the voice of society resounds with conflicting opinion. LSD and related drugs make it possible for the first time to study in the laboratory under controlled conditions human experiences and altered states of consciousness that have existed from the dawn of recorded history. Uh, the case for LSD remains to be proven, either as its being a true imitator of the natural occurring psychosis, that is, a so-called monopsychosis, or for the more recent opinion that it is an effective and short route to psychotherapy. It seems to me that what used to be construed as insanity is now being construed as insight, but that there is very little evidence that the latter viewpoint is any more accurate than the former. It's not surprising that LSD has uh, many critics about its usefulness because there is no form of psychotherapy about which there are good scientific evidence that it works, and this includes everything from psychoanalysis to ordinary psychotherapy to hypnosis. It can't be easily proved there are too many variables to set up a scientific experiment to show that any form of psychotherapy works, although we all have our strong feeling that it does, that they, the various ones do work. I'm very skeptical about the value of LSD in psychiatric treatment. I'm very concerned about its widespread and uncontrolled use, but I am enthusiastic about it in certain specific research activities. For me, the most important value of these substances is that they open up the possibility of understanding the meaning of life as a whole. I do not believe that the visions seen while under the influence of LSD have any religious significance 
Also, I am very apprehensive about anything that allows man to manipulate the mind or paralyze the conscience and conscious behavior of other men. Since its introduction in 1943, LSD has been widely studied. Contemporary philosophers and artists have written eloquent accounts of the forbidden fruit of drug-induced experience. In a moment, we will join a young woman who ventures to explore the other side of reality by taking LSD. I'm professionally interested in LSD uh, because I work in the field of mental health. I've heard that it gives a person a new way of perceiving the world himself and his relationships with people in the world. I hope that uh, work with this drug may lead to helping people to uh, find a better and more creative part of themselves. Personally, I've been a fortunate person. Um, I've had many opportunities in life and have been successful in my work. But sometimes it seems to me that I try so hard to do what's right and to avoid difficulties that I miss some of the beauty and excitement of life. So perhaps I might get something out of the experience for myself as well. Anyway, I'd heard of the research work being done by Dr. Joseph Downing, uh, Chief of Mental Health Services at San Mateo County Hospital. So I went in to see him and arranged to be a volunteer research subject. Now, you'll probably feel some effects in about half hour, more or less. I want to remind you again that this is your day. And even though you're on camera, that you shouldn't be concerned about us. That you should go ahead and go into this experience fully we're here to take care of you and um, you can trust yourself you don't need to worry about control and the more you accept the experience the more you get out of it uh, mary and i are here to uh, be your companions um if you have any questions anything like that just ask us there's one thing i want uh, to emphasize it may be that you'll become confused as to what's real and what isn't real. Now, if this happens, I'll remind you that I told you this might happen and that I'm real. This sometimes happens to people. And this way you can know, because your memory is perfectly intact, uh, what is and what isn't real. You begin to relax now and I want to tell you that you're going to run into things you're afraid of. Everyone does. The thing to do is to go ahead, push ahead, and face them. And I can promise you that they'll vanish. That you'll have the strength to face them. And once you've gone through that, then you'll come out on the other side, and you'll begin to find yourself. Our society is up against the problem that the individual has to spend so much time, so much of his life, and so much of his energy of integrating with other people. And just learning to live in our society that gets more and more complicated, that he has less and less left over to get acquainted with himself. Um, <laughs> what the drug may well do is to make it possible, when you become adult, for example, to get around some of these acquired habits, patterns, which are entirely necessary, and go back towards your own creative core. <laughs> I'm not afraid. Why am I so afraid to feel the world? It's just a marriage. It feels so good to cry, to feel miserable, it even feels good. That's right. And just to feel aggravated feels good. Why have I been afraid to before? It's like I'm a 
was afraid an emotion would swallow me up. But it doesn't. It's, it's like I said, I could stop this any time I wanted to. I was within the cave, and but at the same time I was outside of it. And I had a thought that made it seem very funny. And as as I became funny, it lovely designs and patterns were were dancing all around the cave. They were iridescent and sparkling. It was a happy place full of happy images. And the thought that that seemed so funny was that that maybe this cave was a womb. But this is silly. After all, you know, who am I to think that I could remember what it would be like to be in the womb? And yet, and yet there was something about it. And the idea was left, even though I laughed and enjoyed the happiness of laughing at the idea. Happy that you're laughing. To somebody who felt this way before, it was trying so hard to communicate. But it's all layers and layers and layers before it leaves me to get to all those layers and layers and layers of you. He was trying so hard to communicate, and so he thought, of, well, Rose, that's something that everybody thinks of as pretty, so I'll say a rose. Mm -hmm. And then he, then he tried to use words, just what he knew how to use to communicate the feeling of things. But beauty, that was the best he could do. He can't communicate it very well. It's not wrong. It's just that there's no way to describe it, but you can't do it in words or music. Don't don't make the mistake of thinking that the communications about it are yet. A rose is just a message from that person who saw it to me. And that's the message. Because it's so difficult to communicate what we really feel about things, we develop words and forms of communication that we commonly use, and they pretty well get us through the business of life. But because these forms are really such inadequate condensations of what we really know and feel, we have to accept the fact that we rarely really understand each other, that the gulf between us is enormous, and that we must make allowances for people because we don't understand them, and they don't understand us. Right now, you find yourself coming back to the, the world the rest of us live in, and it hasn't changed very much, has it? Yeah. Now, let's see, it's... Oh, gee five and a half hours since you took the drug. Hmm. Did it seem that long, or...? There were times when it seemed like time was creeping by, and the rest of it I lost track of. I think now, perhaps, 
this experience will change me. I'm not sure. I don't know whether it'll stay with me. But it seems to me that I'll be less afraid of being hurt and therefore more free, free to be kinder to others, to give more, and to live more than I have before. LSD is an experimental research drug which is relatively safe to use in a hospital or clinic under controlled conditions. It is not as yet a treatment drug because we do not know its indications for use or the dangers attached to its use. We see three potential areas of value in the use of this drug. The first is in the study of mental processes, which are in effect loosened or split by the effect of the drug. A second area of the drug use is that apparently in conjunction with psychotherapy by a competent and trained therapist, it at times is of use to some individuals in coming to a deeper and more unified understanding of their problems. This of course has to be in the context of adequate preparation and psychotherapeutic follow-up. Finally, the drug may be a way of studying certain types of states of consciousness, such as extrasensory perception, dream states, mystic states, such as occur in some religious conversion states, and finally, certain of the psychotic states, which up to now have not been entirely accessible to understanding. Science and most informed laymen generally agree with Dr. Joseph Downing that LSD has pointed us toward new research into the mysteries of the mind. But perhaps because no one knows how the drug acts upon the brain, scientists differ sharply in their conclusions. Following a lengthy experiment at the highly regarded Mental Research Institute in Palo Alto, two researchers hold opposite views. Institute Director Dr. Don Jackson is enthusiastic about LSD and explains why some other practitioners fail to understand the usefulness of the drug. Well, the, the whole nature of the LSD experience is hard for anyone who's had it to talk about because we don't have uh, the, the means of translating it easily to another person. The um, experience is, the reason that we had all our therapists take LSD themselves is that, that so much more is going on in the person's head than the, than the observer or therapist has any idea about or that the patient reveals. Uh, uh, it's very difficult to uh, account for it, and it's frightening in some ways to some of the patients. But Dr. Jerome Ormland, who participated in the Institute study and now is in private psychiatric practice in San Francisco, makes this critical evaluation. So my experience was really with patients who'd had LSD as part of their psychiatric treatment in connection with a specific research project. I saw these people over a year or two following their psychiatric, uh, following their LSD sessions in psychiatric uh, treatment. Initially, it did look as if there were significant changes. However, uh, this proved to be largely temporary and mostly seemed to be periods of elation and excitement. Most often, the patient felt that he'd gone through something, and for that, felt better. But this was temporary. It took a lot of hard psychiatric work before the patients were able to realize that they could feel better about themselves through an understanding of themselves. This really brought more sustained improvement. I couldn't see where the LSD sessions themselves did anything but complicate the treatment. Uh, the drug is extremely potent, unpredictable, and carries with it considerable psychological risk. Among those who value the drug as a research tool, there are strong objections to certain highly publicized uses of it. This is Dr. Leo Hollister, Associate Chief of Staff at the Veterans Administration Hospital in Palo Alto. On the whole, uh, much of the better scientific work has been done by basic scientists working in the laboratories 
usually with experimental animals. Uh, however, the problem here is that we don't know just how relevant much of this research is to the uh, main problems concerned with uh, psychotomimetic agents. When we get into the area of research done with patients or with uh, human volunteers, uh, the research uh, efforts there leave much to be desired. Few of them are controlled, a uh, few of them use objective uh, ways to measure effects, and on the whole, I think uh, many people are rather unhappy with uh, the uh, result of the type of research being done so far. Uh, rather than dignified by the name research, I will make an allusion to the type of uh, alleged research that's being done by lay groups uh, or uh, poorly trained groups in which the drugs are given predominantly for kicks, frequently to people who uh, may uh, be uh, in serious emotional difficulties to begin with and uh, under uh, settings which in no way can be construed as a true research effort. Undoubtedly the most perplexing aspect of LSD relates not to science but to religion and its warmest advocates suggest the mystical experience induced by the drug is of profound religious importance. Here at Mendocino State Hospital we have been experimenting for a year and a half on the treatment of alcoholism in women with the drug LSD. In a scientific evaluation of these substances, we may be making a mistake of attempting to judge them by what changes they cause in observable behavior of people. We are thinking much of pathology, sickness, and whether or not this is helped by it. My own impression and experience suggests that these drugs can cause, not in everyone, this is not given to everyone, but can cause a change of values or of the meaning of their life or of the perception of beauty in the world or if you want a change in religious understanding in a very large sense. It's this aspect of, of these substances I would like to see investigated more fully. Some clergymen would agree with Dr. Wilson Van Dusen, acting research chief at Mendocino State Hospital. Others, like Rabbi Alvin I. Fine of Congregation Emmanuel in San Francisco, believe the drug state to be the antithesis of the Judeo-Christian religious tradition. LSD offers some fascinating uh, possibilities for speculation. Uh, it is not new uh, to use artificial means to induce uh, states of uh, vision or trance-like states in which uh, the senses seem to be uh, radically uh, increased. Uh, there have been men in literature, the arts, uh, and uh, in music. Uh, there have been men even in certain religious situations who seem to have been under similar uh, states uh, induced by artificial means. We have much more that we need to know about LSD and this entire experiment. It seems to offer a good many possibilities of uh, fruitful research uh, in human behavior. Also, it seems to offer some possibilities as a psychotherapeutic technique, but I doubt that it would offer uh, anything in my mind uh, of a creative approach to religious experience. In addition to that, we have to decide or try to discover whether or not the state in which one finds himself under the influence of LSD uh, heightens his senses, sharpens them radically, so that what he sees uh, is objective reality, but seen and known in a profounder way than through our normal senses, or whether this is simply uh, a subjective experience, much like a nightmare or an induced dream. Uh, also, I would uh, add one other word of caution about LSD and its potential use. I look with grave suspicion and apprehension upon anything that uh, gives us the ability to manipulate the mind or to paralyze uh, man's conscious behavior. It seems to me that this could lead to a very effective means of brainwashing and conscience washing. And in my religious belief, man's ability to reason for himself and to come to objective moral judgments uh, and choose 
what he believes to be right and wrong is essential within the character of man and essential uh, to a free society. Thus, LSD entices and disturbs us, for there is much to be learned about the human mind, more perhaps than in any other area of man's being. The horizon of our limited knowledge about the mind of man is being extended by judicious use of this strange and perplexing miracle of 20th century chemistry, the drug that alters the consciousness of man. Assignment 4 has been presented in the community interest, produced in color by the News and Documentary Programs Department of KRON-TV. next Monday evening at 6.30 when the News and Documentary Programs Department of KRON-TV presents another report to the West on Assignment 4. <laughs>